on the program today, Kirby from New Edge and Jim Rogers in Singapore, kind enough to spend a big chunk, a lot of time with us on the show today. Let me start it off with you, Kirby, since you're right next to me, and then I'll hand it over to Jim for his thoughts. What's going on? The consumer, nowhere to be found. This is a jobless recovery. We're getting more evidence of that. Look, uh, if you've been listening to me, then you shouldn't be surprised. It was just a matter of when the consumer confidence numbers were going to start to come back to reality, when the consumer was going to realize in these confidence surveys that they had been fooled over the summer. And I was saying last spring that the problem was if the government and the cheerleaders of the economy want to try to get confidence back at an early stage like this, far too early, mm -hmm. they're going to have real trouble getting it back when they need it later on. The consumer is not going to be fooled numerous times. But again, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if they have confidence or not. The consumer has no money, they have no means, but they also have no wherewithal to spend. So mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter. It's not the normal cycle of boosting confidence to boost spending, to boost uh, investment by companies, right. to raise employment, to get the cycle going. It can't work this time. Okay, vicious cycle, we're going nowhere. Jimbo, let me ask you something. Even though consumer confidence continues to rot, home prices are up, the dollar's on a rebound, are we missing the beginning of something that uh, flew by our, uh, flew over our head? Well, I don't know what, what we're missing. There's some things always changing. The dollar is overdue for a rally. Everybody in the world is pessimistic on it, including me. So whenever you have everybody on the same side of a boat, Bernie, you know as well as I do that it's time to move to the other side for a while. So we may have a rally in the dollar. We may have a decline in, in perhaps some of the commodity prices or stock prices for a while, uh, but that's just change. That's what always happens. But to Kirby's point, you know, for a while there, a lot of people were getting a lot of money from the gov from governments, not just the U.S. government. And anybody who got money thinks, well, things are better now. But remember, eventually that money's got to come from somewhere, and the people that are, that are supplying the money to the people who are getting it start to say, wait a minute, things are not better for me. And so you have a reaction, and then things calm down. Okay. Do we, so we are, we've agreed to agree here, have we, uh, Kirby? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is there any differentiating point? Are there any nuances between uh, Jim's view of the world and your view of the world? Uh, not really. I mean, we, again, Jim and I just spent uh, a day in China and Guangzhou together uh, doing a speech in a three-and-a-half-hour panel, and we hashed out a lot of differences. We have a couple of nuances in commodities and a little bit on China, but for, as far as the U.S. and the reality of the recovery there mm. and the possibility for this to be driven by the consumer and sustainable without government stimulus, we are in agreement that that is not possible this time. I hope I'm, I'm speaking correctly for you, Jim. And the problem is, is that stimulus is running out, mm -hmm. and this is the question. Is the U.S. government going to try to, to, to stash through stimulus to and an and extension of the uh, first-time okay. home, home buyer's credit? This is key for investors. All right. Without right. it, double dip percent. All right, let's let Jim weigh in on this one before we break. Jim. Well, Bernie, yes, as long as if people who are receiving money think things are great. But I have to repeat myself, the money's got to come from somewhere. You either have to tax people or borrow it or print money. And all of those things, in the end, are going to make problems mm -hmm. worse, not better. Okay, we've got deficits on top of deficits, and it is a uh, molehill turning into a mountain, seems to be the takeaway from this chat. Jim and Kirby will be back on the other side of this break, along with uh, Jim and Kirby. Jim, any hope for Japan at all? I don't think you and I have talked about Japan ever, have we? Or have we? Well, I, I own the yen, so I'm optimistic about the yen. I, I, I wouldn't hmm. buy government bonds in Japan with your money, Bernie, uh, with anybody's <laughs> money. I mean, that bonds, those bonds have to go down and have to go down a lot. I do own a few Japanese here. This new government says they're going to make some dramatic changes. If they do, some people are going to benefit, some people are going to suffer. If they do some of the things they say, people are going to have more babies. I own baby socks in Japan, for instance. Okay. You don't, uh, you, 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 we, I think the, the both of you believe in the secular decline of the dollar, judging from what you were saying in the earlier uh, slot there. Where's the yen going anyway? Any idea? You don't like to guesstimate, do you, Jim? I, I know you don't like to draw lines in the sand, but would you continue to own it? I own it. I, I expect it to go higher. I mean, if you want to know how high it's going to go, you should watch Bloomberg. The guys on Bloomberg can tell you answers to anything every day. But I just own it. It wouldn't surprise me if it didn't go back to make new highs, you know, above 79 to the U.S. dollar, not anytime soon. We'll have to oh, wait wow. and see. I, 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 that's not a prediction. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. I will own it until I decide not to own it. It'll either go up and I'll have to sell it down the road, or it'll go down uh -huh. and I'll have to sell it. But right now I own it. That's pretty weird, Kirby. A uh, currency on the advance like that in such a moribund economy in a deep freeze. 
Yeah, and this is what I've been saying for the last two and a half years when I've been bullish on the yen, is that it's very contradictory, and we're not looking at the growth of the economy in line with the strengthening of the currency. It was initially the unwind of the carry trade that brought the yen back and gave it strength in the deleveraging of the economies. Now, uh, it very perversely, uh, as that continues, it's taken on almost a safe haven status. And again, that's only a name. It's very much a misnomer, just as the dollar is. Neither of them are safe havens. That's the way the market treats them. As we go into the next round of risk aversion, which I have been calling for a couple of months here, but it's going to continue. I've been wrong on timing. We will see the yen strengthen more, the dollar strengthen. We will see gold retreat. We'll see commodities retreat. And we'll see equities go down. It is inevitable. Bonds will then rally. That is going to be the beginning of the risk aversion trade. Then we will see some of these correlations break down. But for the time being, the yen has more strength, no matter how pathetic the state of the Japanese economy is. And I stress pathetic. I believe it's mm -hmm. past the point mm -hmm. of no return. And this government is doing nothing to address the core problems. They're actually exacerbating it. Okay, still you've got a dichotomy going and, there then in the, uh, in the, in the yen. Uh, can I take, let me throw a question to you, Jim and, and Kirby. Elliot in West Virginia writes in, Jim, how can the U.S. stock market be in an uptrend when the dollar, when the, when the greenback's in a downtrend? Don't investors have to buy dollars to invest in the U.S. stock market? And who in their own right is buying U.S. treasuries? The auction seems to be going pretty well. Well, I certainly wouldn't be buying U.S. Treasuries, with, again, with anybody's money at this point. The Federal Reserve seems to be buying, and various and sundry people like that are driving up the, the U.S. government bond market. That's the next bubble in the making. It's, I'm not short bonds right now, but I cannot imagine lending money to the United States government, Bernie, for long periods of time in U.S. dollars. So that's mm -hmm. a bubble. I wouldn't buy it. How, how can the, the stock market go up? Well, the money's got to go somewhere, and people, there's a lot of money being printed all over the world, and one of the places that it frequently goes is into the stock market, whether the fundamentals are sound or not. You can have stock markets going up with good fundamentals or bad fundamentals. You can have them going down with good fundamentals and bad fundamentals. Stock markets and the economy are two different things. Okay, we seem to know that. Frank from Tulsa, Kirby, writes in, do you think Bernanke's tightening of the economy is a hoax? Has he the courage to raise rates uh, when unemployment is going up? Would higher rates actually be a good idea right now? No, I don't think that uh, Bernanke has the, uh, has the ability in himself to come to the decision to raise rates before the point of inflation getting out of control. And the problem is, is the metrics they're using to look at inflation are not going to work when the inflation is coming from monetization of debt and expansion of the monetary base. I know that the naysayers, the, those who say that, that it is not a problem because we're in deflation now, we're talking about M2, you need velocity. They are correct right now. We are in deflation. It will creep up on us. It will hit us. Bernanke will not be in a position, mm -hmm. uh, or will he have the wherewithal, to use that word again, to hike in time to stop inflation, and that is the worry. It's a time really issue. It's that. going to come. Really I truly believe, believe that. Inflation. Look at look at all of his but studies, the all of there. his writing. Kirby. They're not there. Kirby. They're not there yet. Of course not. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, Jim. Kir Kirby, you said we're in deflation, and that's because you don't do your shopping. Your butler does your shopping, but the rest of us know the prices <laughs> are going up. You you go down to a grocery store. You go down and fill up your your car with with gasoline. You'll see that the prices of everything are up. Maybe some that prices are down, but not many. You know, even right. the United States government, which lies about mm -hmm. inflation, if you look at their mm -hmm. numbers, except for okay. energy, they acknowledge that everything else is up in price. Jim, uh, this, is, uh, this is right up your alley here. Four days of losses in gold. It's going the wrong way. Is this just one of these short-term little, uh, you know, uh, circular things, but uh, doesn't really uh, change your mind or worry you at all? Well... Bernie, gold was making all-time highs a week ago, so ago, and not many things in the world are making all-time highs these days. So it's natural that you would have a reaction and a consolidation. That's the way markets work. They go up, they consolidate. They go up, they consolidate. Longer term, gold is going to be much higher. If it goes down more, I hope I'm smart enough to buy some. Curry. Yeah, absolutely. I've been waiting for the risk aversion trade to come on for two things, to sell the dollar and to buy gold. So I'm very happy seeing this happen. I'd like to see it uh, come down a bit more from here. Um, what's what's going to happen with, um, I pulled a piece from the journal today. There was a leak, a news leak in Russia about the uh, plans by uh, the precious metal export agency to sell up to close to $2 billion in gold. I guess they like the capital gains and they need the money to find all of Putin's ambitions or whatever is going on over there. But they're going to delay it. But if you've got these central banks dumping 
that quantum of the stuff onto the market, that could really skew things and turn things on their on their side, couldn't they? Or would, or could they? Well, it'll be a great chance to see just how robust the market for gold is, and I think that China will be one of the big buyers, and will likely uh, we won't see as big a reaction to the downside in the market as we would have in more normal times. Okay.